It is being described tonight as one of the most important scientific achievements in the history of mankind. An American scientist has announced an historic breakthrough in the development of artificial life. J. Craig Venter has put together strands of DNA to create a man-made bacterium, the first step in, in creating organisms that could help solve many of the world's problems, ranging from new vaccines to clearing up pollution. But it will also raise fundamental ethical issues. One leading bioethicist tonight claimed the achievement would seem to extinguish the argument that life requires a special force or power to exist. Our science correspondent Julian Rush has this report. You're looking at the world's first ever man-made living organism. This bacterium may be one of the simplest organisms on Earth, but it only exists because it was assembled and sparked into life in the laboratory. It lives here at the Maryland Institute, owned by the controversial, wealthy genetic scientist and entrepreneur, Craig Venter. After 15 years' work, he's realized a personal dream and taken mankind across a scientific threshold, a turning point that marks the coming of age of a very, very new science called synthetic biology, founded on the ambition that one day it'll be possible to design and manufacture purpose-built bugs from scratch that could be used in a wide range of biochemical industries. What we've done is to make a cell that's controlled by a genome that we synthesize completely. So we have a case here which is a proof of principle for the idea that if we know how to design a cell to do something useful, we could build that genome and get it operating in a cell. Everyone knows DNA is the code of life. You might not realize it, but you can now buy DNA off the shelf by mail order. And that's where this synthetic organism started. Fenter's team went DNA shopping and bought more than a thousand short strands of DNA. In the lab, they joined them all together in the right order to create a completely man-made copy of the genome of a simple bacterium. Then they put it into the cell of a different strain of bacteria, converting it to the new man-made strain. The final step was the defining moment. The new cell functioned and divided and multiplied. It was alive. Craig Venter and his team have done nothing less than show that it is now possible for mankind to create artificial life. That said, it'll be a few years yet before scientists will be able to sit down in front of a computer screen and design from scratch a genome for a truly synthetic organism. And that's because although we can map where hundreds of genes are, our understanding of what they all do is still very limited. Yeah, cross the threshold and I think it's, it's sort of no way back now. Uh, and so I think the way forward is exciting. and. You know, it's going to take quite a bit of time to really start maturing the technology so that it becomes, you know, routine, that it becomes, you know, that someone can sit at a computer and design a genome. I mean, that is quite far away, but it shows that maybe it's possible. And, and just showing that it's possible is enough to really stimulate people's imaginations and scientists and researchers to, to really, you know, grapple with this and see how far we can take it. Craig Venter has huge ambitions, or hubris. He wants to solve some of mankind's most difficult problems, like climate change, with designer bugs that consume carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and excrete biofuels as waste. He's patented the technology. If it does all succeed, he'll be an even richer man. Inevitably, research like this raises huge ethical issues that scientists and society must face. People talk of bio-error, what happens if these organisms escape? And they talk of bio-terror, what happens if people take this technology and use it maliciously to create a bio-weapon? Now it's a very high-tech bio-error that could have huge consequences if uh, you're trying to um, solve climate change by putting these bacteria in the oceans, something goes wrong, that's a huge bio-error that might, look current, might make current climate change look like a very minor thing uh, if it goes wrong. Bioterror is getting into the wrong hands and you know there are uh, many many laboratories just on the edge of what Craig Venter uh, is doing in countries whose governments we uh, may feel quite worried by um, and, uh, and that is the, the terror uh, possibility.
Tonight, there are already calls for the technology to be banned until proper regulation is in place. For right now, there's none. But it is being thought about. A committee met at the Royal Society today to consider focus group surveys on the regulation of synthetic biology. Their results surprised the researchers. Apparently, we aren't frightened by it, but we do want it properly controlled. Julian Rush. So I've been speaking to the man who headed up the research, J. Craig Venter. I began by asking him whether this would be viewed as one of the most significant developments in the history of biology. Well, it's, it's certainly, I think, going to be viewed as a, a bright line in the history of synthetic biology and is a, also, at the same time, it's a baby step. It's an indication now. It's the final proof of concept that this is possible going forward, that we can actually go from the computer uh, into uh, new living cells. So uh, this cell is the uh, first one on the planet that uh, its parent came from a computer. What we have here, in a sense, is a private individual or a private trust that possesses a major cellular breakthrough which has huge implications for mankind. Who is to regulate you, control you? Well, the National Institutes of Health here in the United States has just recently proposed some new regulations for the companies that synthesize DNA. And any institution in the U.S. that gets federal funding uh, has to uh, work under certain guidelines and review procedures. Uh, and we have followed all of those, as most other labs do. But as of now, you're free to do with your invention whatever you wish. Well, I think uh, that's true for scientists everywhere in the world. Whilst this is clearly a very exciting breakthrough with tremendous beneficial potential, it's also surely possible that it could be a very infernal uh, discovery that could lead to the eventual destruction of mankind. Well, I, I think that's a dramatic overstatement by several orders of magnitude. Uh, it is uh, clearly a dual-use technology, as most modern technologies are, that can be used for negative purposes or positive ones. Uh, in all our uh, reviews of this uh, with government officials, uh, the view is that this is maybe a linear increase in the uh, negative potential, but an exponential increase in the tools to do good and uh, ensure uh, a healthy long-term survival for our planet. So we have to be cognizant of the negative potential. Uh, we have to make sure there can't be frivolous uses. Obviously, the scientific community con needs to continue to be uh, responsible, as they have been with past discoveries, and I have no doubt that will take place. J. Craig Venter speaking to me earlier out of Washington.